I want to spend a little bit of time on cardinality <clears throat> before I do the two big proofs today, which is that the rationals are countable and the reals are uncountable. And then we'll have one application of this. And cardinality in particular, we're going to talk about the cardinal numbers. All right, the first cardinal numbers are easy. It's 0, 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 some sort of dot, dot, dot number, right? So these here are just the positive, sorry, non-negative integers, right? Uh, those things are all, if a set has a non-negative int, uh, value for its cardinality, we'd call it countable. It's a finite, right? These, these are the ideas of the finite. And you would assume that just having, if we're talking about collections of stuff, that finite would be enough, especially if you talk about quote-unquote reality, right? Reality, there's always a finite number of chairs. There's a finite number of particles in the universe. There's a finite number of atoms that are in the sun. There's a finite number. It's, it's fixed, right? And But on the other hand, we can leave this idea of, you know what, I'm okay with fixed, but are we okay with extending our mental model to things that are not? And so when we talked about the idea of what is the cardinality of the positive ints, and we called this Aleph not. This thing is the first of the infinites, which is non finite. Oddly enough, if I would consider that cardinality, saying this is the first of the non finites, we call it Aleph null. Right? So I have Aleph null, and that's the how much do we have? Well, it's not finite. Well, sometimes it's hard to get your head around this, and people would argue that, well, that doesn't actually exist for me within reality. It's kind of this problem of, like, this ellipsis, go and never stop. Can you really, really do that? No, but can you do it in your head? Sure. So all of a sudden, our mental model doesn't actually match up with, what, with, with kind of what happens in reality. We simply say, oh, look, is there such a thing as non-finite? In my head, I'm OK with accepting that. That also gets this idea of limits when we do things like 1, 2, and then 1, and 1 half, and 1 third, dot, dot, dot. Where is that approaching? If I continue this process forever, the harmonic numbers are approaching what? That harmonic sequence is approaching 0. Does it ever actually get there? No. We say things like it is infinitely close. There is an infinitesimal. And people argue, is there, is there such a thing? In my head, there is. Right? You can go to quantum mechanics. There's the smallest possible thing. And you, you know, it's the, you know, quantum. And it, it's fixed. We talk about all those sorts of arguments. But in the end, it's like, no. If we accept that there is such a thing as go forever, and you say, well, I don't believe I can physically do that. I don't care. In your head. Do you accept that there is such a thing as go forever? And we say, yes. OK, fine. And we have infinity. And the first of those is Aleph null. And Cantor, when he showed that, says, well, you know what? For every one of these numbers, this, every one of these cardinalities, if you have one, there is always a next that is actually bigger than it. So if there's Aleph null, he showed that there's going to be an Aleph 1. But if I have an Aleph 1, there is going to be an Aleph 2. And if there's an Aleph 2, and these go beyond finite, and these are called the transfinite. Cardinal numbers. They go beyond finite. We run into this several times within mathematics. We have rationals. Then all of a sudden, I have square root of 2. That's beyond a rational number. It's something that cannot be represented as a rational, so we call it irrational. It leaves it. We actually have functions. 
right? There are functions that exist that I can even plot, but I can't write down using normal algebra. You know, like things like this. You can have x squared plus the sine of x, right? Nice little thing. We can call that y. But there's actual functions that I cannot write down like this. All right, and so one of those ones would be uh, if I would integrate from 1 to x of e to the minus t squared dt, that has to be a function of x. There is no way that I could ever write this thing in that form. It goes beyond our ability to write it down mathematically, and I have to leave it in a representation of its antiderivative, its derivative representation. There's a function that when I take its derivative becomes e to the minus x squared. What is it? I can't write it. I can plot it. I can do all these nice little things with it because we have approximations, but I can't write it down. And we have numbers that are called transcendental. It's a transcendental number like pi. There's no way that I can take normal numbers like 1 squared plus the square root of 3 using normal things like powers and plus and minus and times and things like that and ever get out using a finite representation of them and ever get out a number like pi. It transcends our ability to do it arithmetically. And so there's lots of things that are kind of awkward, like the square root of 2. Square root of 2 goes beyond our ability to write things as a fraction. The bell curve goes beyond your ability. Right? When you take a derivative, you get the bell curve of this thing. It's like it goes beyond our ability to even write it down. But it exists, and we use it. This is the same way. There's cardinalities that go beyond the idea of finite. And not only do they exist, they're actually in order. There's a first one that's bigger than finite. There's one that's bigger than him right? that goes up to a, lar a larger size of infinity. And the first one that we accept is to simply say, OK, fine. The, the entire set of the counting numbers 0 to infinity has the cardinality aleph null. And what we do is we say all of these numbers like this we call countable because they're based on the counting numbers. Whether it's non-finite or finite, it's at least based on the counting numbers. So that's why we call them countable. Interesting question is, who in the world are these. These are sets that are bigger than things. It's a bigger non-finite. It, it transcends finite. But it's bigger than this one thing that's infinite. So what do they look like? So we're going to go a couple of proofs. 